Hey, Fabian, you're in Vermont? No, not yet. Not yet? New York? I, yeah, in New York, up in Rochester. Uh, we're driving to Vermont on Thursday afternoon. Cool. It's going to take us five hours or so. Okay, it's uh, time to get started. The first item on the agenda, um, as a follow-up from last week, I started to inventory um, major initiatives. Like I, I started with the list um, of things that we had um, put through the engineering allocation process. That was Eric's original ask. Uh, and then I expanded the list a bit um, with other initiatives that I came across. Um, what I haven't done is add like all the things that we definitely have blueprints for. And I think doing that would be interesting because A, we'd see like how many things we've had blueprints for a while, but have never been implemented. And also for the ones that have been implemented, um, whether they also had subsequent steps for the PRR and AppSec reviews. Um, so that was a, a, a good call out from Lucas because I, I think including an AppSec review column is, is a good idea. And then also like, I'm sure most folks are familiar, but the AppSec review process is issue based, whereas PRR and blueprints are, um, you know, like managed as, as, as code. And I think that's another indicator that there's an opportunity to consolidate process here. Um, I found the AppSec reviews like difficult to find because you're having to, to search through issues, right? Like it'd be great if all that stuff was just correlated together. Um, there was a comment that uh, Zhao made on the MR that I had. Let me try to find that real quick. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll link it later, but one thing that I definitely want to go over is like the definition of architecture in this context. And we talked about it a bit last time, but I think like in, in various discussions I've seen, like I don't think we have clear consensus on, on what that is. Um, I mentioned last time that I would start an MR to um, look at doubling down on the blueprint terminology, but after thinking about it a bit, I'm, I'm not sure if that is um, any more clear than architecture. I think because people, currently associate blueprints with architecture changes that shifting away from the term architecture towards blueprint isn't going to change anybody's mindset about what those things are. Um, and, and like based on my evaluation in this spreadsheet, like my opinion is that everything that's in this sheet like should have had a blueprint and should have gone through uh, PRR and, and in many cases, AppSec review as well. Um, and so I think, I think it would only do us good to have a broader definition of, of architecture. And I think the only way we're going to effectively communicate that is by not using the term architecture anymore. So does anybody have any thoughts on, on that here? I mean, I'm happy to like start that conversation in MR, but I wanted to get some feedback first. May I ask a, a couple of, of questions? Um, this is Fabian. Um, uh, I'm new to this and I'm just invited uh, by, by Marshall, so I may not have the full context, but Marshall, you just said that all of these initiatives in the spreadsheet should have had a blueprint defined. And I think my, like, sort of my question is, in these initiatives, right, is there actually um, sort of a, a, have they actually accomplished the, the results that were, they were looking for? Because ultimately, maybe the outcomes of this are maybe a little bit more important. And I think my question is like, 
if we have something like an architectural blueprint or all of those things, they should be facilitating really good outcomes. I think this is maybe something where when designing this this process, we need to be mindful of, right? Because if we make a, a big, you know, sort of entry level barrier for like starting something by having to create a really long document or, um, you know, a very complex process, then we may discourage people from starting to work on some of those things. And I think the this is something that I'm always a little bit worried about. It's like, if initiatives are successful and deliver results, I, I think I'd like to understand it's like what things did they actually do to make this successful rather than saying like they should have complied with this process because even if they didn't, then- Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so for, for context, like when, when I say that like, I think these initiatives should have gone through, like, like should have had a blueprint produced like we're we're trying to figure out a what a streamlined process looks like for like making making that efficient enough to where it's it's like a no-brainer right so like i i agree like the current like architecture evolution workflow and having to like get uh, an evolution coach and produce a, a giant document that we don't really have good like standards or, 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 or templates around is, is a huge barrier to entry. Um, so yeah, like we, we in, in order to like say, you're gonna produce this documentation for every, every single major enhancement to the platform, like we, we, we have to have a better process there. Um, in terms of like generating good outcomes, I think it's totally possible to achieve desirable outcomes without producing a blueprint. Um, but I think even if it slows things down slightly in the short term, that it improves like our overall communication and pr pr basically provides a mechanism for people to get caught up to speed very quickly. So like when we have large initiatives that um, impact multiple teams or multiple aspects of the product, I, I think we don't do a great job facilitating feedback on those initiatives like broadly across the organization. Um, and so even in cases where like it's a, it's a big enhancement, but it feels like it's scoped to your team. There's a good chance that there's overlap with what other teams are doing. And so there's like an opportunity cost to, to, to not communicating out that out more broadly, I think. But yeah, I mean, we're trying to like quantify that to some extent, right? To prove to prove that it's true, but that's sort of my intuition. Yeah, I think it's, it's important to have a bit better uh description of what warrants creating a blueprint what what, what actually would benefit from it um we, we've been writing blueprints for a while already and we created all of them some of them were successful some were not but what what is quite apparent to me is that people basically know when a blueprint is required because they intuitively understand that something has a broad scope and this um, explanation of why we need to do something, uh, how we are going to do that, where are the other options, what are challenges, opportunities. Documenting this somewhere is actually uh, important and people do understand that very often. And uh, I have a nice and interesting example I would like to actually discuss because we uh, some time ago we went through uh, major initiatives and we discussed whether we had a blueprint or not. And there is an interesting initiative, Fabian, you, you, you've been involved in, like it's the composition and GitLab pods. And like the composition was quite successful, we thought, well, there was not, no, no blueprint for it. So why, why, why people didn't want to create that? And then we had this discussion and we understood that actually there was a blueprint. You created this uh, large spreadsheet called GitLab pods or something like that and documented 
all the opportunities, challenges explained to non-technical audience, why do we actually need to do that? What are the alternatives? Uh, what are going to the benefits? And for me, it's exactly what the blueprint is for. It's just, you know, with a Google spreadsheet or a slide, it's actually slides, it, these were slides. Slides are, you know, a bit different um, medium, uh, a different, different way to deliver that content. Um, and. Um, Describing how to write this content to, to unify and to consolidate is something that we want to do here. Does it make sense? Also, I just want to say there was a blueprint for functional decomposition. Uh, just, I'm not sure if that was a, a, a point or not. And I, I think it was quite useful early on to help get lots of people aligned on, on what the intention was um and there was there was a blueprint and i remember camille worked quite hard to to do that and i think that's one of the most important things about a blueprint is is kind of making sure that everyone's aligned and on the same page and expecting the same thing out of out of what's going to be built and that, that was uh, built sure. through i think we never merged that but i, I think it, that it wasn't merged but the but the purpose was still this the the purpose yeah. i think still uh, was was valid right which but was also which the, was the, getting the, everyone yeah, uh, the Google Slides document Fabian uh, has been had been maintaining for a while. This was exactly also something that I was think what I understand now is I think, yeah, I think Andrew, what you you are saying is is right. It's not. I think the CI decomposition we never followed the like formalized. This is how you are supposed to do it and merge it. But for all intents and purposes, I think we had to explain in great detail to various stakeholders yeah. why this matters. You know how we're trying to go about it. What the alternatives are. I think maybe this is, if again, you know, please excuse me, I, I like some context, but if the intent is to sort of create a framework that allows us to capture that right in an efficient way, then I think that makes sense. I think then the question is like, what, what could that look like? Because I do think that um, this is at least my experience, you know, great initiatives, maybe especially in engineering die, if you, are not able to explain to stakeholders outside of engineering in product or in other business cases why this is impactful. And I think it would be very helpful to have you know guidelines we could say like, okay, we want to make this larger change. This is this is the the outcome we're looking for. Um, so I agree. that's different from a blueprint because a blueprint is technical in nature. And what you're talking about is all the fighting and and stuff that we do when we sit down with Sid and Eric and Christopher and everyone else to convince them we need to do something. And that has nothing to do with the architecture, the technical solution, or the blueprint itself. Well, I, I think that's- I, I hate to interrupt, but I, I still don't know what we're talking about or what problem we're solving. And I apologize because I missed the last meeting. I, I wasn't able to attend, but I, I still hear that we keep going back to this thing about prioritizing things and selling it to product. Which has nothing to do with the architecture process. I actually I, 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 I disagree about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think there's a pitfall much. of the of the current process, not a not a feature, right? Um, like if you look at how other organizations and other like large scale open source projects produce, but we're not a large scale you know, open source project. Why do we keep using this analogy? We're not uh, there's, there's 8,000 engineers in various different companies trying to solve these problems that are different to different companies. We're a single engineer organization with about 600 engineers. I'm just not sure that these open source for large project solutions play a role here because at the end of the day, here, the problem continues to be getting funded, getting money to get people to work on problems. And that mostly happens not because of blueprints and not because of um, technical solutions. That mostly happens because we have to build this business case that convinces the stakeholders that have a big plan to say, yes, we need to dedicate people to this problem, create a team, take people from other team. Yeah, so- and, Like I'm not and, saying blueprints and... are perfect, but I just don't think they're the problem that that we keep discussing and by the way functional decomposition i think was extremely successful to align every stage in engineering to do the things that needed to be done for functional decomposition to work so i'm not even sure why it's it, it's been given as an example of the failure of the process for something that was ridiculously successful 
Well, so yeah, Jerry, I, mean, I don't I think don't... anyone. I don't think anyone said that. As yeah. far as like, like everyone was saying it was a success, and and uh, so I think that's that's yeah. Okay, but I that was my reading of it. Yeah, yeah, we're just cataloging yeah. all initiatives. Like the spreadsheet is not like a list of initiatives that failed in any way. It, we're just trying to catalog catalog large scale initiatives and then identify like what parts of our process were or were not followed. And, yeah, but we, we still seem to have this, this disagreement about what Blueprint is and what should be in there. So, uh, well, I, I before like... we get to that conversation, like I, I want to be clear that like a, a, a one of the main problems we're trying to solve is how we can hook this process into next prioritization. Right, that 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 was the the big ask from from Eric. Okay. Um, so I think that like that ought to be a a better mechanism than we've had before for getting initiatives like this prioritized. Because um, even though it's not at the sole discretion of engineering managers, as, as far as I've been told, um, the engineering manager's responsibility is to communicate. Um, like maintenance activities that they that they want to get prioritized, and the PM is supposed to take that into uh, into consideration. That and 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 like the thirty percent towards maintenance that they're supposed to um, allocate, right? So, what we need to do in this working group is like figure out how we facilitate that process, and specifically, I think when we talk about the larger initiatives, if we don't have some framework for engineering managers to coordinate across multiple teams, um, we're, we're gonna see that 30% time spent on like more trivial tasks that only impact one team, right? So like we need some, we need something that multiple EMs can say, hey, like we want to implement this blueprint or we want to um, tackle this large scale maintenance effort. Um, and, and that has to be defined somewhere, right? And communicated. Um, so if I understood you correctly, this is more about if trying to fix a failure of prioritization rather than define how to sort of best present a technical implementation for for a problem that we're trying to solve so it's more about the making sure that you know we we find the correct priority for something that we want to do whatever that is or is it really about the how to do something because i think that goes back to a little bit what jerry tried to say you know how to do something and writing that down you know is i think very interesting from an engineering standpoint but at least in my experience not every stakeholder is necessarily interested in the implementation details they want to know what the impact is why we are trying to do it you know and is that what we're trying to make sure happens more effectively as part of the overall prioritization i think those two things are tied together you you can't prioritize correctly unless you fully understand the scope and to some extent the, the context of the architecture and the implications of what the competing proposals are. Yeah, so I've been using blueprints for multiple uh, things actually. The one thing is to explain people why we need to do something and the second is how to uh, do it and uh, it's for me blueprints, a blueprint is a map of how to get from point A to point B but to get from point, point A to point B you need to know why you need to go there. So it's like, uh, for me, blueprints are multi-level documents. At, 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 the, at the top, there is just uh, content that explains why we need to do something in a way that is easy to consume, but then we can go deeper and, and describe more technical details in the sub pages or like make it you know a bit more comprehensive document. And um, yeah, and, and, it, it, and it was quite successful so far. Uh, I just, Fabian wanted to mention that I, I don't think that we, we want to say here that we failed with prioritizing stuff. And I, would, I wouldn't say that there is uh, that because we have a bunch of blueprints that were never actually done, it was a prioritization failure. I think it, 
we, we can't conclude that because we had other priorities and it's always the art of actually choosing things that you can work on given the limited capacity. Uh, I think what was a bit challenging was that uh, we, we had a bunch of bunch of blueprints merged, approved, everyone was on the same page that we need to do that. And we committed to doing that, yet we could not do that. So if uh, I think that the problem here was not really understanding what our capacity is, whether we can actually do something with, you know, given given capacity, given the time and, and resource we have. So, uh, yeah, I think it's not a prioritization but, failure. It's more like a communication failure or something like that. Can I ask, a, like, a, so what you were describing there, Jagosh, sounds more like maybe what the next prioritization working group is about to some degree is about prioritization and yeah. maybe what we're talking about like to me a blueprint is like a communication framework in effect right primarily focus the primary stakeholders are engineering but there there are other stakeholders but primarily we we're trying to coordinate ourselves on a on a solution and align across various engineering departments and qa and you know security and engineering focused departments um and 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 then getting that prioritized it sort of feels like there's more overlap with the next uh, prioritization working group because that seems to be what they're purely focused on where maybe what we should be talking about is um like optimizing and standardizing because every blueprint that i see is very different from every other one um so standard and and not making it a template where it's just a checkbox like nobody wants that but but having a few sections and maybe saying like why don't we why don't we make the production readiness review part of the same process and so you know everyone wants to be everyone always says oh we want to be involved really early on you know infrastructure say that security say that everyone wants to be in so if you have a single document where all that's happening that could be you know part of that process and then and then that needs to kind of inter interlace with the um with the prioritization working group and we say here's a proposal this is what we want then we work with product to kind of get that uh going i don't know that's that's just a sort of one way that we could potentially do it yeah and and i think we should think of like like blueprints certainly get to a point where they become an, an immutable resource but up until they are implemented like we should i think we should think of blueprint development as an iterative process right and, and i'm not sure like what ought to come first in most cases whether we we need an initiative prioritized before we really do a deep dive and and figure out all the technical details or vice versa uh, i assume it's some probably some middle ground in between um but I, I would suspect that like the first iteration of a blueprint is much more focused on the like why than the how right and then once we've established like the problem that we're trying to solve then we get more into the technical details and finally we get into the details that are necessary to complete like production readiness or or appsec review right and even looking like i think the PRR process has a lot of the same problems as 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 blueprints do in that like I don't think they capture like a lot of the detail that's necessary to 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 make that evaluation. Um like when 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 I, I think it's important that we capture details like what are the rate limits on all the new in points going going to start at, right? Um if like we're introducing a new data store or something how are we scaling that have we benchmarked it like what were the um results of those benchmarks right because if 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 it's to be an effective communication tool it needs to be something that we can go back and look at and say like this is the full decision that was made end to end for um for like this major enhancement right and, and we can under we can go back in time and understand like why decisions were made and why we chose to rate limit an endpoint to this degree or why we why we didn't right um but there's we have no single place for any of that information today
So I think I see what you're saying, and it almost sounds like there is this set of things we want people to think about when they're thinking about, I, I realize I'm being a little redundant there, but hey, if you're creating a new endpoint, here is a set of things that you should talk about in the blueprint or whatever the artifact is, right? Limiting, um, or there's actually a, a, doc, a document on the handbook if people are thinking about new data stores. Um, but let me take a step back. The, the reason why we created the architecture evolution workflow was because we had a bunch of engineers saying, I've been screaming about this problem for a year and no one pays attention to me. And so Jagors and I worked on this so that any engineer could say, I see a problem over there and I'm gonna go create a blueprint that describes the problem. I'm gonna rope in a fellow, a distinguished, some managers. And I have this tool called the workflow that allows me to do that to expose these problems. And that has been used in various occasions. Is it widely, widely used? No. Uh, we, you know, we intended to do a video. We intended to do more of a roadshow of, hey, engineers, you have this tool to bring attention to things that you think are important. And there is a filtering process in there. We're trying, to, we were trying not to be too prescriptive about it, but we really just wanted to give a speaker to any engineer who saw a problem, but couldn't get past their sphere of influence within the team. And that's the sole purpose or the primary purpose of having the current the workflow as it exists today i think that's a worthy thing to continue to have to have any engineer in the company decide i'm going to write a blueprint i'm going to rope in stan jerry andrew camille whoever they're going to work with me through this and frankly sometimes we've looked at some of these things and said no there's nothing here there is we really shouldn't pursue this or oh, this is really important. We need to go make some noise. We need to rope in engineering managers. Up until there, we're fine. Like people have used that. But the frustration that I've seen personally and from other people is, okay, so I go through the workflow and it dies into oblivion, even though I spoke with some manager and some director and some VP and some fellow and some distinguished and a bunch of people. And it was all for naught because it never saw the light of day which is, I think, where the problem lies. Like, at this point, I I don't really care. I am just happy that people are writing so that I, when somebody tells me about a problem, I can go and read and not ask 82 questions um, about whatever the problem is. Somebody sat down, thought about it, wrote it, and I don't really care what the format is or if it looks like everything else that we've written because it's more than what we have today, which is either issue comments, some random epic, or stuff on Slack. So if I have a single place where I can read about a problem, I'm just super happy. Yeah. But again, I think the, 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 the issue here is you go through that thing, you have your blueprint, you have your thing, you, have, you, you know the problem, you've thought of a solution, and now you can get cycles to implement that. And partitioning is the prime example of that, right? We've, we solved this two years ago. We just haven't been able to slot it for implementation because of a thousand other priorities like this isn't product doesn't just say now you know we ask for functional decomposition we've asked for a bunch of stuff and they ask for a bunch of stuff and there's only a number of engineers yeah i i, I mean I, I broadly agree with everything you're saying I, I even mentioned in the last meeting that i think architecture blueprints in general are some of the best documentation that we produce as an organization i think the container registry one in particular, like, is a fantastic resource for understanding where we were, why we needed to change things, and like what we ended up doing. Um, the PRR for the container registry was also a, a great example of a of a PRR, um, and I think that's a very effective communication tool. Like, I, the whole time the container registry migration was underway, it seemed like there was like everybody knew what we were doing and why we were doing it. Um, and I, I think that speaks to the value of blueprints as a communication tool when they're written well. I like, I agree that like, we absolutely shouldn't lose sight of like 
the original goal of blueprints, which is to, to get initiatives that engineering thinks are important prioritized. Um, and along those lines, another thing I mentioned last time was that I think it's going to be difficult for us to get there uh, unless we have a unified roadmap between product and engineering. Um, because unless all initiatives are scoped out and defined in the same way, it becomes very difficult to um, empirically evaluate like what should take priority um, bet between things that are being proposed from product and things that are being proposed um, by engineering. Eric's feedback on that was that it, we're very unlikely to change the um, products process in the immediate term. A and so like what I took from that feedback is that we should really tighten up the process on the engineering side, make sure that we are um, following that process for all engineering initiatives. Uh, and, and then like once we have a good workflow there, take that to product and and try to like unify the proposal process to where everybody's doing the same thing. Because I think I think uh, as long as product has their own roadmap, like it's it's just gonna sort of like the stuff on that roadmap is is gonna take priority almost by default, right? Um, so one place to start is to ask product, hey, if we wanna, what data do you need? to make these decisions before we start tinkering with any processes because we may come up with a beautiful thing and then we go to Josh and Josh is like, this means nothing to me. <laughs> so we we need a conversation with product to say, I mean, product is, is keenly aware of the fact that there are a bunch of engineers thinking about, oh, we're gonna hit this wall or we should do this or we should do that. Um, and maybe you're right, we're not speaking the same language. And so when we, when we go to product, they, you know, there are some obvious things. Functional composition mass happen because we don't want the database to implode. But it's always in the subtleties where things get lost, right? Um, yeah, so, and, and I think a reason for that is that like things get buried in in issues and comment threads, right? Like it's just issues. I agree are... that that's why the blueprints exist because I was drowning and trying to follow the thread of. You know, yeah, I, I I feel your pain because that's that's what pushed us to say, now take all this stuff and put it in a in a single document that I can read. Yeah. Um, but I think that's probably the next step to to sit down with Fabian with Josh and say, how are you thinking about things and how do we translate our the things that we see into something that is more homogeneous with the stuff that is coming out of product? Because yeah. then that will that will give us a good understanding of oh, you know what? Blueprints are actually belong two layers down inside engineering. And what we need to produce, I don't know what to call this new artifact, but the thing that I can tell you is, and, and Fabian dropped off, Fabian and I spend ungodly amounts of time just having conversations with executives to quote unquote, defend the paths that we want to take. And sometimes that happens in a Google doc. Sometimes that happens in a presentation. Sometimes that happens in an epic. And we should probably move away from that um, and have a single, I don't know, if it's a bunch of Google documents, then it is. Um, if it's a bunch of epic issues, whatever. Um, but there's got to be a, a summarizing artifact, right? Something that you can just hand over to somebody in product or somebody in, uh, or to Eric or to Steve or to Christopher or to any engineer, and they can read it end to end and say, oh, okay, I get this. Yeah, I understand where this begins and this ends. Uh, I, I, th I think it's a partnership. Um, I joined late, so I apologize if I missed content and we've already talked about this, but um, I had some of customer issue, but um, you know, I, I think it's gonna be a, we're, we're gonna wanna have some level of like ROI and like impact statement here of if we do or don't do these things. Uh, from a little bit of the product standpoint, like we don't have a lot of capacity right now for features. Uh, I, I think if you look at most groups, they, they, they're pretty indexed on 
other areas, um, you know, security vulnerability back down, backlog, um, uh, you know, error budget, uh, FIPS, all, all the other items that are kind of just like consuming time. Um, I, th I would, I think the general feel is that there isn't a whole lot of time for, for features. And so I, and, you know, I, I don't think it's that product is just like, you know, uh, at least currently uh, going full, full feature mode, but there's just a lot of priorities out there. And we have OKRs, we have SUS improvements, and like like trying to actually figure out which one we go do is is not easy, um, uh, because there's like eight different competing objectives, company objectives to try and like prioritize for groups times. Um, you know, we we've spent I think six meetings in OKRs this quarter to try and figure out like just to make sure we don't have OKRs that if we just did the OKRs that we would still have enough time to just do the OKRs. Um, but um, uh, and again, that, that's a broad statement. So there, there could certainly be outliers. Um, but um, I, I think on these, I, I think that like the the decomposition went well once it got moving. I think I think we have buy-in on pods. I think that I think that went well. Um, the continuation, and so I think we have a model here. But it's going to, I think it's going to be a partnership and. We're going to want to have product help, I think, to help calculate the ROI on some of these things, like eventing, right? Like, it's super cool. What can we do with it? Like, where should it fall into the backlog of other things like FedRAMP and you know, vulnerability backlog and things like that? Um, and, and so I, I think it's going to be, a, to some degree, a, a partnership with the product here so we can help have that common viewpoint and advocate for it together. Yeah, and and I like I think we can work this in parallel to some extent because like engineering is responsible for dictating like what requires PRR and what requires AppSec and the documentation that's required to tick those boxes. Um, so in, in terms of like defining a more streamlined process, yes, we need to figure out like um, the, the 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 types of things that that product needs in a blueprint or whatever we call it in the future to evaluate things on their side. Um, but there's plenty of consolidation to do in terms of process on the engineering side as well. Yeah, I, it's gonna be like sort of scalability, right? Like um, what's the capacity headroom we're gonna have? Like when we're we gonna hit it, what's the growth rate type stuff, right? That we can all work together on. And Podman has a good model, I think on that for pods. Um, and then yeah, I, mean, I, I think pods is like a, a good example. Like, I, as far as I know, most of the documentation still only exists in that uh, Google slide that we were putting together, right? But it's one of those initiatives where um, as much as we can communicate the direction we're planning to go, uh, like broadly within product and engineering today, people can start building features in a way that could be decomposed into pods in the future, as opposed to just, you know, continuing the the status quo and making the pods implementation harder um, when we get to it, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we're at a point now where we'd still be able to like go like follow these architectural guidelines, but um, hopefully, I think hopefully soon, right? Hopefully, we get some people to actually start proving some of these things out here. Yeah, and then we can start. But yeah, I, I mean, I think with with dedicated started with a long deck and then once that got kind of finally approved and we had a good day where we're going they that thing got transitioned over into a wealth of docs um yeah and and, and i think also like things like unifying our auth tokens and service accounts and stuff like all that like by definition impacts everybody and and i would say most teams probably have use cases or opinions or like Th things that they want to see achieved there. Um, and it's not to say that discussion can't happen in, in issues. I just think it's it's difficult to evaluate what the current state of any of those proposals are, right? Like at a glance. Yeah. Uh, so it could be maybe some way to apply some of these things for like definition of done type stuff and like code coding practices, like, hey, stop doing these things. We're gonna start snapping to this new service account model. And that's just sort of like for 
you know, at least for future cleanliness, right? So at least not making the problem worse. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cheers, everyone. See you next time. Sorry, Talia, that we didn't get to your comments on the RFC. I look forward to that next time. <laughs>